On today's episode, I tell you why, as a podcaster, you should really hone in on a single platform and what we can learn from the most popular burger chain restaurant in all of Southern California. They just turned 75 over the weekend, and they are so, so good. Let's get started. Sound matters. Be heard. Welcome to the podcast where you get exclusive behind-the-scenes tips to make your own show sound truly spectacular. This is Podtastic Audio. Hey, what's happening and how are you doing? Hey, how is that podcast of yours coming along? Hey, I want to check it out. Hey, don't just uh, keep it to yourself. I want to hear it too. Let me have it. I want to hear your show. I am Chris and I am from the original Chris and Christine Show podcast. You know, you can find out every single thing about that show on a website, which I built all by myself. Yeah, check that out at chrisandchristineshow.com. And there's a link to it in the show notes of this very episode. Yeah, scroll on down and there it is. You know, I am very thankful that you are listening to this podcast today. You know, I create this episode. I create all the episodes. Actually, I create the entire show for you so you can create a better podcast for your audience, for your listeners, or maybe you're having a trouble trying to find listeners. Well, perhaps maybe if you made a better sounding show, it might attract people to push play twice because getting people to push play once, that's easy. Getting to stick around, eh, that's a little trickier. So hopefully if you have decent sounding audio and a decent flow to your show, maybe it'll make it sound better than all the rest that are out there. So as I record this episode today, tomorrow happens to be my actual birthday. So uh, what you get me for my birthday, huh? Listen, all presents and prizes you can send over to podtasticaudio at gmail.com. I'll take gift cards. I'll take hellos, happy birthdays, birthday wishes, or you can find me on whatever social media platform you choose. Uh, Send something over there too. That'd be great. Uh, Listen, I'm just kidding. You have to get me anything. It's all fine and dandy. I realize as I get older, as I have a birthday every year, the more it just becomes another day on the calendar. But speaking of birthdays, my absolute favorite restaurant of all time, can you even consider them as a restaurant? When I think of restaurant, I think of like sit down dining where a waiter comes to you, takes your order, goes back to the kitchen, they bring out your food. So my absolute favorite like fast food uh, restaurant of all time, anywhere in the world, It's got to be In-N-Out Burger. I love In-N-Out. Are you kidding me? See, I also live here in San Diego where in Southern California, In-N-Out is everywhere. And they've been really booming lately. They've had a new restaurant open up on every other corner. It seems like there's one everywhere now. They keep opening them up more and more. And that's great. I absolutely love In-N-Out Burger. I remember when I was a driver for another company, I had a particular route that I would do every single shift. And it took me by the In-N-Out in Mir Mesa right off the freeway there. And I would go there every single shift. I would stop there around the same time. And I remember I was in there one night and um, one of the fine employees that work there, hey, Chris, how you doing? It gets usual for you today. And I said, sure, why not? Let's do it, you know? Every single night. I swear I must have ate In-N-Out like every day religiously for an entire year or two. Like if I go somewhere and off the freeway, they have like three choices, like a Wendy's, McDonald's, or an In-N-Out. Are you kidding me? I'm always going to go to In-N-Out. And if you see the line for any In-N-Out from open to close, they are packed. They're busy. From open to close, nonstop, uh, you will see a line or customers coming and going at an In-N-Out burger. You know, speaking of birthdays, just over this weekend, In-N-Out Burger just celebrated their 75th anniversary. 75 years in business. They've been around almost around the same time McDonald's started. In fact, uh, both burger joints kind of started really close to each other in the same general area around the same time. In-N-Out claims that they were the first ones to introduce the actual drive through speaker system. So before that, car hops were kind of a thing where you'd park and then somebody would come out to your car on like roller skates or something if they're goofy or whatever, kind of the way Sonic does it really, kind of like that. And they come out, take your order, come back, bring your food to you, and you eat it like in your car. In and out 
figured that since people were always on the go, this invention called the freeway system was kind of a new thing, a novel idea. People are coming and going, driving. So in and out decided to put all the restaurants fairly close to the off ramps so that when people got off the freeway, they went straight through the drive through And this whole drive through system was a remarkable invention. We still use it today. Almost every fast food place has a drive through these days. Hell, even Starbucks has a uh, drive through attached to them now. But people would get their burgers, get their food, and be on their way. Now, in and outs unparalleled popularity in any given area stems from a combination of factors that collectively set them apart from other burger chains. Its commitment to using fresh quality ingredients creates a distinct and constantly superior taste. I can vouch for that. The simplicity of its menu allows for efficiency and speed. There's really only three choices when you go to an In-N-Out burger. You got burgers, fries, and drinks, and milkshakes. That's pretty much it. The emphasis on positive customer experience, marked by friendly service, and a transparent open kitchen lets you see inside to what they're cooking live in real time adds to the whole brand's appeal. All of this, coupled with a family-owned legacy in a deep connection to the West Coast culture, not only distinguishes In-N-Out from its competitors, but it also establishes it as a symbol of authenticity and quality, making it a go-to choice for burger enthusiasts everywhere. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear what Gordon Ramsay has to say. I love In-N-Out Burger. Honestly, yeah. I just wish they'd open up in bloody England because um, those drive throughs are amazing um, and they're great fun. Why are people so devoted to this? You sound like someone who's never had an In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> Celebrities have been seen downing Double Doubles on Oscar night. Julia Child said it was one of her favorite burgers. Paris Hilton once needed In-N-Out so desperately, she got a DUI on her way there. I was just really hungry and I wanted to have an In-N-Out burger. What keeps most people coming back is a simple menu that basically hasn't changed since Harry Truman was president. Burgers, fries, sodas, and shakes. It's about the quality, the friendliness, and the cleanliness. We keep it simple. So, are you hungry yet? You might be. So, some of the key reasons why In-N-Out is so popular is... Well, they've got quality ingredients. At the heart of In-N-Out success lies the commitment to using fresh, high-quality ingredients. The burgers are made from 100% pure beef. The vegetables are sliced fresh. The buns are baked on site. Everything is as fresh as it possibly can be. Now, they also have a very simple menu. You know, by keeping it very simple, they can do what they do best, which is focusing on burgers, fries, and shakes. These simple items are great because they can really perfect their offerings rather than diluting their focus with an extensive menu. You see, customers appreciate the straightforward choices. And even though it's limited choices, customers can still customize it any way they want. And if you've ever walked into an In-N-Out Burger, you will realize that the staff there is very cool. They're very nice. They're very friendly. They're on top of it. They're always cleaning everything. They're always behind the register, moving around. I think every employee there is trained to kind of do everything at the same time. So you may not be just working the register. You may be cleaning the floor. You may be taking orders outside. You may be, you know, uh, walking around greeting customers. They're very over the top when it comes to customer experience. And I do know that the employees at In-N-Out Burger make a ton of money, way more than the industry standard and way more than your competing McDonald's or whatever other fast food place out there. And it shows with the quality experience. So are you hungry now? I know I am. So you're probably thinking, hey, Chris, dude, what does any of this have to do with podcasting? And I will tell you, so check this out. So like In-N-Out Burger, how they have focused all the resources, all their expertise into delivering a single awesome product, making it one of the most popular fast food chains in any given market, making it the best. Now, I know that some, if not most podcasters out there, want to focus on spreading themselves very thin across a multitude of platforms, whether it's TikTok videos, Instagram, YouTube videos, audio podcasts, maybe try to get on the radio, maybe try to you know, do this or do that, whatever. They constantly want to spread themselves out, have a multitude 
of things available, thinking that they'll catch somebody to listen or check out their content from one of these micro different sources. Now, I've got seven ways on why podcasters should hone in on a single platform. Just lose all the rest and focus on a single place. So here we go with number one. Consistency is key. Solo focusing on a single platform allows podcasters to maintain a consistent content schedule. Whether it's weekly episodes or daily updates, consistency is vital for building and retaining an audience. You know, if you're juggling multiple platforms, it can dilute this consistency and lead to burnout. Number two, deep dive into audience understanding. By concentrating efforts on one platform, just one, Podcasters can delve deep into understanding their audience. Analytics, metrics, feedback, and engagement comes more manageable, enabling content creators to tailor their material precisely to their audience preferences and needs. Moving on to number three, mastering the craft. Now, becoming a master of one trade is often more advantageous than becoming a jack of all. Focusing on a single platform allows podcasters to hone in their skills, be it in audio editing, video production, or platform-specific marketing strategies. This dedication to mastery can lead to higher quality content that resonates with more profoundly with your audience. And remember, you're doing this for your audience. Now, moving on to number four, building a strong brand identity. A consistent presence on a single platform aids in building a strong and recognizable brand identity. Whether it's a tone of voice in audio podcasts or a visual style in a video content style podcast, a cohesive brand helps in establishing trust and loyalty among your audience. Okay, moving on to number five, which is probably my favorite on the list, and that is efficient resource utilization. See, time and resources are finite, and spreading them too thin across multiple platforms can lead to diminished returns. By focusing on a single platform, podcasters can allocate their time, energy, and resources more effectively and optimizing for growth and impact. That is why making an audio podcast, at least for my personal experience, have have been very easy to do, and I've been able to focus on what matters most, which is creating a good-sounding audio podcast, not worrying so much about the video fluff. The video stuff is fine, too. Now, if you are a video podcaster or video YouTuber or whatever, then focus on that and don't worry about everything else because time is the most precious resource we all have. We all have exactly the same amount of it. Now, how you decide to choose to use it is really up to you. So moving on to number six, algorithmic advantage. Now, many platforms reward consistency and loyalty. Algorithms tend to favor creators who regularly contribute content to a specific platform. Leading in a higher visibility and discoverability, this can be a significant advantage in growing an audience and expanding reach organically. Now, last but not least, we come to number seven, which is adaptability and innovation. You see, a singular focus provides room for innovation and adaption within the chosen platform. So whether it's audio podcasts like here, see, podcasters can experiment with different content formats, styles, topics, audio drops, sound effects, intros, pushing the creative boundaries and staying relative to their audience's evolving tastes. That's what I've done here and on The Chris and Christine Show. Your podcast is not set in stone. You can change it up however you want. But if you're working within the boundaries of a singular, you know, platform, whether it's audio podcasting, it could be video stuff too. Listen, with video, there's more you can do with video. Visually speaking, you can do a lot more. And I think that anybody that decides to 
jump into the YouTube basket and go full on into YouTube if they have the time to do it. It takes a lot more time. I was telling somebody the other day, he was saying, why don't you do more YouTube stuff? Like, why aren't you doing a whole video YouTube channel? For one, there are millions out there. And two, it takes double, if not triple the amount of time to actually create the content for a YouTube channel. Well, something that I would be proud of, something that I would want to put out there. With audio, I find it easier for me to create an audio podcast than I would something for a YouTube channel. You see, in the dynamic world of content creation, it kind of covers everything really, the decision to solely focus on a single platform is a strategic one. It enables podcasters to not only create high quality, consistent content, but also to forge deeper connections with their audience. You really want to get in there with your audience, connect with your audience directly. Now, by mastering these things on a single medium, a single platform, you can position yourself for long-term success and recognition in an ever-expanding digital landscape. There's always a new app or a new platform that opens like every single day. It seems like there was, you know, of course, Twitter and, and uh, Facebook, but then they had uh, threads came out with Instagram threads or whatever you call it these days, which is anybody even using threads? I'm on threads, but... I, I rarely look at it. I rarely even do anything with it. So it's like whatever with me. Having you know too many choices can put the audience, the listener, or even the viewer at that point, kind of like confused, like, well, which one do I use? I don't even know where to go. And you're throwing me all kinds of different things. And then, of course, you as a content creator, I mean, there's only so many hours in a day. If you're spread too thin across all of these different platforms, how are you supposed to make an amazing show when you're thinking, oh, I got to make this for TikTok. I got to make this for YouTube. I got to make this for Instagram. I got to make this for Twitter. I got to make this for Facebook. I got to make this for this post. I got to make this for that and this for that and that for that. Uh, you know, oh my gosh, it blows your mind thinking about all these crazy different ways that you can make content. I get it. But all I'm saying is focus on the one thing, just like in and out Burger, they focus on making their one thing really, really well. And they are extremely popular because of it. You know, here in San Diego, we have Jack in the Box, which is also another burger place, which, side note, was actually created and founded here in San Diego. Their corporate office is right here in San Diego. They've got a ton of things on the menu. Oh, my gosh. You can go in there and get uh, Chinese food, Mexican food, burgers, shakes, fries, chicken wings, chicken fingers. It's like a plethora of different variety of things, and they mix and match things all the time, take things out, put stuff in. And some people love Jack in the Box, but they are not as good as In-N-Out Burger. In-N-Out Burger is like, I would say, the benchmark for all of these other fast food places to reach. And they hit it on all fronts. And that's because they are simple, they do things right, and they focus on making an amazing product that obviously we all love. Hey, thank you once again for listening to this episode today. You know, I really, really appreciate it. That makes me smile so much. But you know what would make me very happy is if you gave me a honest review on your favorite podcast player, whether that's Apple, Spotify, Joe Blow's House of Podcasts. I don't know which one you use. But if you could give me an honest review about the show that I've created to help you, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. And I will catch you on the next episode.